One of the best ways to make extra money is to sell products online. But whether you start an online store or just want to get a couple of items that are taking up space, you need to find the best place to sell your stuff. So to help, I've compiled a list of the best websites to sell stuff online. But I'm only going to talk about the websites that you all have probably never heard of before. As a result, I'm not going to talk about eBay, Etsy, Amazon, or Walmart because these are the obvious marketplaces. Every site in this video has a large audience, its own pros and cons, and caters to a specific type of seller. But most, if not all, have one thing in common. They are all easy to start and can help you reach potential buyers quickly. So marketplace number one is the Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is an online marketplace within Facebook where individuals and businesses can buy and sell goods. There is no listing or subscription fee to sell on Facebook Marketplace, and customers in the US can complete purchases directly on Facebook using the new checkout feature. Here are the pros. There's a huge audience. Facebook Marketplace has more than 1 billion monthly users. There's low selling fees. Facebook only charges a 5% commission fee or 40 cents for orders below 8 bucks. This fee includes taxes and payment processing fees. You can also build customer relationships. Shoppers can contact you via Facebook Messenger if they have any questions. Here are the downsides though. It is difficult to build a brand. Facebook Marketplace is filled with secondhand goods sold by individuals rather than businesses, making it difficult for you to stand out. Also, there's no vetting of sellers. Facebook doesn't vet its sellers and anyone can list products as long as they have an active Facebook account. The next marketplace that you probably never heard of is Poshmark. Poshmark is an online marketplace where you can sell new and pre-owned clothes, shoes, jewelry, makeup, handbags, and electronics. You can join and list items immediately for free. But most visitors to Poshmark are looking for a bargain, which is why it's better suited for selling secondhand goods. Here are the pros of Poshmark. There's a very supportive community. The Poshmark community is tightly knit and answers all of your questions. It's also really convenient in terms of shipping. Your customer pays a flat fee for items below five pounds, and then Poshmark emails you the shipping label. You can use any carton or poly mailer and schedule a USPS pickup at your doorstep. There's also very high engagement. Poshmark receives more than 45 million visits with an average session duration of 10 minutes and 25 seconds. Here are the cons though. It's difficult to establish a brand. Unless you have unique or quirky designs, you will not stand out from other sellers. There's also a high commission rate. Poshmark charges a flat commission of $2.95 for items under 15 bucks, but for items above 15 bucks, Poshmark charges a 20% selling fee. The next marketplace is called OfferUp. OfferUp is an online marketplace that lets you buy and sell locally. Now, even though many transactions are delivered by hand, OfferUp partners with USPS to support nationwide shipping, except in Alaska, Arkansas, and Hawaii. OfferUp also allows you to list goods for free, but charges a commission of 12.9% on every sale you make. Here are the pros of OfferUp. You get direct contact between buyers and sellers, and they allow buyers to contact sellers with product-related questions. It's also pretty easy to navigate. The OfferUp app has a minimalist design with filters that make it easy to find goods. Here are the downsides, though. The customer service is just average. They really need to improve their customer service due to its reputation for lack of responsiveness and not handling complaints adequately. It's also a pay-to-sell model. There are thousands of items listed on OfferUp at any given time, and to stand out, you need to pay money to bump up your listing. The next marketplace is called Mercari. Mercari is an online marketplace based in Tokyo, Japan, where you can buy and sell new and used items. They reach over 120 million monthly visitors, of which 70% are from Japan and 26% are from the US. Mercari has several product categories, such as home decor, electronics, vintage, beauty, and tools. Here are the pros. There's a very low commission. They only charge a flat 10% selling fee on all the orders. The shipping is also integrated. You can ship your items independently or use pre-configured UPS and USPS shipping labels. Here are the downsides though. There's limited availability because it's only available in the US, UK, and Japan. Mercari also gets comparatively low traffic. When you look at other online marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, or Etsy, Mercari gets much lower traffic. Next marketplace is called Depop. Depop is an online fashion marketplace that is popular among the Gen Z population. It gets over 10 million monthly visitors, mostly from the US and the UK. They let you list new, pre-owned, or vintage apparel, jewelry, beauty products, sports equipment, books, and more. And it's one of the best places to sell secondhand items from known brands like Nike, Urban Outfitters, and Adidas. Here are the pros. It's actually very user-friendly. The website and the app have a minimalist yet quirky design, and it's really easy to list and navigate products on Depop. There's also automated shipping integration. 
Depop is an automated shipping integration that helps sellers in the US and the UK ship. Here are the downsides though. The commission fee is pretty high. They charge a 10% selling fee plus a 3% payment transaction fee. There's also a lot of competition. They have more than 30 million items on their platform with 1.8 million active sellers. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to sell online, make sure you take my six day mini course below. Also, I've documented all of my e-commerce strategies in my book called The Family First Entrepreneur. Go in the show notes below and make sure you check it out. Next marketplace is called Declutter. Declutter is a resale company that buys electronics from individuals, refurbishes, and then resells them on their website and app. You can sell phones, iPods, tablets, video game consoles, wearable tech, computers, DVDs, and more on Declutter. Now to list an item on Declutter, you must first scan the items you want to sell and then add additional details. Then you'll receive an instant quote after which you can ship your items to their warehouse. Here are the pros. It saves time. Declutter handles the marketing and the sales part, and they also repair and clean the goods before listing it on their website. The shipping is also included. Declutter will literally pay for your shipping for your items to their warehouse. You just need to drop it off at your nearest post office. And you also get the payment really quickly. You basically get paid one day after they receive the goods. Here are the downsides though. The payouts are really low. Declutter offers low resale prices on most goods, and you're better off selling on eBay if you have a tech item that is in good condition. Next marketplace is Gazelle. Gazelle is a reseller that buys and sells old electronics like tablets and phones. Now, unlike Declutter, Gazelle only sells iPhones, Samsung Galaxy phones, Google phones, iPads, and MacBooks. You get an instant quote, and the shipping is paid for too. However, Gazelle doesn't pay much for your goods. Here are the pros. There is a bulk sales option. You can sell electronics in bulk using their bulk sales option. You just chuck everything in a box and then ship it to Gazelle. The customer service is also very good. They are very responsive and answers all of your questions quickly. You also get free returns. After you ship your devices to Gazelle, they may revise their offer based on your item's condition. And if you're unhappy with the new quote, they will just ship you back your devices for free. Here are the downsides. The quotes are very low. Gazelle's offers are usually below market value, and if you want to make more money, it's probably better off that you sell on eBay. Getting paid is also slower. Compared to competitors like Declutter and Swappa, Gazelle releases payments in three to five business days. Next marketplace is called Swappa. Swappa is a consumer to consumer marketplace for buying and selling new or used tech. Unlike Declutter and Gazelle, Swappa provides pricing data to help you list your device at fair market value on their platform. You can also trade in your device for a lower price instead of waiting for a customer to buy your product. Here are the pros. The commission is really low. They only charge 3% on every sale, which is much lower than their competitors like eBay and Declutter. You also get paid instantly via PayPal after the buyer purchases your products. Here are the downsides though. There's a very short listing period. Swap out listings last for only 10 days and after that, you need to manually extend the time by 7 days and the maximum listing time is 60 days. The listings also must be approved. The Swappa team must approve every listing manually to prevent spam. As a result, you might need to wait a couple of hours or longer for approval. Next marketplace is called Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane is an online marketplace specializing in antiques, collectibles, and vintage products. And on Ruby Lane, you'll often find coins, ceramics, dolls, fine art, jewelry, lamps, and rugs. Now, although Ruby Lane lacks the name recognition of other marketplaces on this list, it is one of the world's largest online vintage stores and they sell more than $125,000 worth of goods every single day. Here are the pros. The service fee is low. They only charge a 6.7% commission fee and it's capped at 250 bucks. Ruby Lane also tends to attract high-end buyers. The average selling price is higher than in other marketplaces. And in addition, Ruby Lane attracts a targeted niche rather than a general audience. Here are the downsides though. Ruby Lane charges a monthly maintenance fee of 54 bucks for 50 products. And after that, the fee is one to 30 cents depending on the number of items. Also, the website is a little bit outdated. The UI of the Ruby Lane website is dated and the search feature does not work that well. Next marketplace is called Gumtree. Gumtree is a UK based classified ad and community website, primarily used in the UK and Europe, where you can list vehicles, properties, jobs, and services. Gumtree only provides a platform for listing your products and does not provide delivery services. Here are the pros. There's actually no commission fee. Gumtree doesn't charge anything. Instead, it charges a fee to position a listing at the top of the search results. It's also very easy to use. Listing an ad on Gumtree is simple and intuitive, and you can also communicate with your buyer using Messenger. Here are the downsides though. The listing period is short. 
Listings for most categories only stay alive for 30 days, and listings remain active for services, jobs, or property for 60 days. There's also no shipping. Gumtree takes no responsibility for shipping, nor does it provide any assistance. The next marketplace is called Creative Market. Creative Market is an online marketplace for digital goods and community-generated design assets such as graphics, fonts, WordPress themes, and photos. They have over 5.7 million monthly visitors and gets most of its traffic from the US. Now, to sell in Creative Market, you need to send a request for an invitation and then upload your portfolio. Here are the pros. Creative Market can be a great source of passive income since you don't have to stock or ship orders, unlike physical goods. There's also no listing fee. They don't charge any listing or renewal fees, and there's a pretty large file size limit. They allow a 500 megabyte file size, which is way more than Etsy's 20 megabyte limit. Here are the downsides though. The commission fee is very large. They actually take a whopping 40% commission on every sale. There's also an inactivity fee. They charge a non-refundable inactivity fee for every 30 days for accounts with no activity in 18 months. Next marketplace is actually a social media site called Instagram Shopping. Instagram Shopping is actually a set of features that allows users to shop and pay for items directly on Instagram. You can display your products on the feed, stories, reels, live, Instagram Shop, Instagram Direct, and shops on Instagram. They also provide analytics called Instagram Shopping Insights, which lets you view important metrics like the product button clicks and views. Here are the pros. There's a huge audience on Instagram. With more than 2 billion monthly active users, it is the world's largest social media channel. There's also an intuitive user interface. It's easy to navigate and user-friendly, and users can check out without leaving the Instagram app. There's also a low selling fee. They only charge 5% commission per order, including taxes and payment processing. Here are the downsides though. It's only available in the US. They also lack advanced e-commerce features like email marketing and abandoned carts. The next marketplace is called Virage Sale. Virage Sale is a Canadian-based virtual garage sale app that lets you sell new or used items locally. It gets 1.5 million average monthly visits, which most of the traffic is coming from Canada and the US. Now the best part about Virage Sale is that they don't charge any commission on the items that you sell. Here are the pros. Verage Sale verifies user identity before allowing people to list on their platform. It's very easy to use also. All you need to do is just add images, write a description to list your product for sale. Here are the cons though. You can only sell locally. So if your community isn't active on Verage Sale, you won't be making many sales. You also need to get approved. It can take a couple of hours to days or even weeks for your application to get approved. The next marketplace is called Cherish. Cherish is a curated marketplace for contemporary and vintage home furnishings, decor, and art. They have three membership plans and charges the following commission fees. 20% commission on items below $2,500, 12% on items below $25,000, and 3% commission on items over $25,000. Now, now, since Cherish focuses on valuable items, it attracts buyers willing to spend more than your average customer. So here are the pros. There's actually no listing fee. Also, you get shipping assistance. They use in-home delivery movers for smaller items, and they offer discounted shipping rates for larger orders. Now here are the downsides. Now besides the commission fee, you may need to sign up for a membership. There are two free membership plans, but they have limits on the number of active listings you are allowed. Cherish also gets relatively low traffic with 3.5 million visits, with most of that coming from the US. Next marketplace is called Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a local networking service for neighborhoods where you can buy and sell items, get local tips, and communicate with your neighbors. Nextdoor allows businesses to list and offer deals to local community members using their Nextdoor for local business program. You can have your own landing page and purchase ads to promote your business locally. Here are the pros. You can actually see the number of community members who have visited your page and other metrics. And then people can contact you through the app or the website if they have questions. Here are the downsides though. It's actually quite difficult to drive traffic. The more recommendations you have, the higher you will appear in the search results. And if you're new to Nextdoor, it will not be easy to compete against well-known businesses. There's also limited traffic. You need to be in a community where Nextdoor is widely used to take advantage of the app. Now the final way to sell online is to own your own website. And for that, I recommend Shopify. Shopify is a website builder that can host your online store, making it a one-stop shop for e-commerce management. Now, unlike other platforms on this list, Shopify won't showcase your products to millions of visitors. You need to build your own brand and market yourself on various platforms. However, Shopify does offer a B2B marketplace called Handshake, where wholesalers can connect with small businesses, and you can also easily buy or sell an established Shopify store on the Shopify Exchange platform.
Now here are the pros of Shopify. You can actually create a unique brand identity using Shopify since you have complete control over your products and your website. There's also no restrictions. Shopify does not limit how you sell or communicate with your customers, unlike online marketplaces like Amazon, where you must follow specific rules and regulations. It's also very scalable. Shopify is designed for all businesses from small to large enterprises. Here are the downsides of Shopify though. You are actually responsible for building brand awareness and attracting visitors to your website. You need to learn how to run PPC ads and use social media to advertise your products. The upfront costs are a little bit higher as well. For a basic e-commerce site, you need to invest a minimum of $29 a month to purchase a basic Shopify plan. You also need to install third-party apps and themes, which can increase your cost to several hundreds of dollars per month. Now, if cost is an issue, here are some cheaper alternatives to consider. So the million dollar question is, what is the best website to sell your stuff online? Well, the best marketplaces to sell items online are the platforms with the most traffic. So I would start with eBay, Amazon, and Etsy if you haven't already. And if you sell specific products like electronics or vintage goods, consider selling on specialized marketplaces like Gazelle, Ruby Lane, or Creative Market. But remember, you'll need to invest a significant amount of time to manage every marketplace. So just pick one or two to start with that are best suited for your products. So now that you know the best websites to sell online, you actually need products to actually list on these marketplaces. So make sure you watch this video to learn the best suppliers to find products to sell online.